Hey everybody and welcome. So in this video we're going to talk about all the cool things I've 3D printed and putting them on my airplanes and stuff like that. I do need to give you a little FYI. I started out 3D printing these for the masses and it turned into the biggest cluster I've ever done in model air, aircraft. Um, people are ripping me off. I try to put my, my 3D prints out there for free. I mean my uh, files and people were selling them as their own. It turned out to be a disaster. So I don't, I only 3D print for very custom projects, which right now I'm out until the end of 2023. And I don't sell these anymore. So don't email me saying, where can I buy these? Um, all my designs and everything on my Patreon. And I think for five bucks, you can get everything and download it. But I don't like to pimp my Patreon too much because I'm, it's just there to help the hobby. And maybe I should pimp it more. But let's get going. So basically, when you look at this picture here, I am so stoked because this is a twin cylinder dummy radial engine I 3D printed and made for my MSL2. The exhaust pipe are 3D printed. Uh, the brakes um, uh, main components are 3D printed. And I just love doing it. But I've had people say, is 3D printing worth it? Well, when I look at this next picture here, and this was taken by a great photographer that likes to take pictures of RC aircraft. Her name's Jenny Alderman. But when you see this picture right here, the pilot's 3D printed, the radial's 3D printed. Keep in mind, there's a thing called aircraft depression. It's where your airplane has a sole and it gets depressed. And normally it's your fault. If you don't have a pilot and you don't have a dummy engine in it, you're, you're flying a depressed plane. They fly depressed. You put a pilot in it and you put an engine in the front and they're happy airplanes, okay? But let's talk about where this all started for me. So around 2001, sorry, everybody, my allergies are killing me. Um, I got a program called Bricks CAD because I wanted to learn AutoCAD. And it was only like 25 bucks or 20 bucks, something like that. AutoCAD was like 100 at the time. So I bought the Bricks CAD. And also I'd read on the internet that it was easier to learn than AutoCAD, which wasn't true. It was just marketing. Because I was scared of AutoCAD. Everybody who knew AutoCAD seemed like they were way up here to me and I'm down here. But I learned Bricks CAD. And then three, uh, two years later, I came across this college student that had a free version of 3DS Max. And I'd never heard of it, but you could draw in 3D. So the Mosquito was drawn in 3DS Max. Um, the T28 I designed was done in 3DS Max. My 68% uh, biplane was done in 3DS Max. And the, most of the beginning design of the MSL2 was in 3DS Max. And then I got Fusion 360 and imported this all into that. When it comes to my printers in 20... In 20, how do I say this? Early in 2017, like February, a friend of mine reached out and says, you've got to get a 3D printer. And I'm like, that's only for young people. I'm not going to do it. Uh, it's too modern. I'm an old fart. And he's like, Dag, you've got to try it. And then in June that year, he's like, dude, look at the 3D prints people are doing. And I'm like, oh, I might do it. And then he said, look, buy the printer. And if you don't like it, I'll buy it from you. But you've got to try it. And the, 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 the Prusas are about 800 bucks ish and they come as a kit that you put together. And believe me, anybody can, they're not hard. The directions are so fantastic. But I bought my uh, Prusa and then realized that exporting the um, files from my 3D program that I needed didn't work as good as I wanted. So then I bought Fusion 360. Okay. So... And I hope I said all that right. So I started with Bricks CAD, went to 3DS Max, bought me a Prusa i3 Mark II, and then got Fusion 360. Now, when I learned AutoCAD and 3DS Max, there was no YouTube tutorials. Nowadays, you can learn how to take a person's kidney out on YouTube. So if you go to YouTube and you look up a guy named Lars Christensen, he works for Autodesk. He has, without a doubt, the best Fusion 360 tutorials in the world. And that's where I learned Fusion 360 was watching um, 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 Mr. Christensen. So I then liked my Prusa so much, I bought another one uh, a couple of months later. So I have two of them. And I call them Thunderbird 1 and Thunderbird 2. Thunderbird 1 has 20 miles now of, of, of filament printed through it in the five years I've had it. Uh, number two has about nine miles, I think it is. And I might be off on those, but that's what I remember. 
Before I get too deep into this, I want to thank my sponsor for being so cool with me. Uh, RTL fasteners, if you need blind nuts, bolts, nuts, lock nuts, washers, metric, standard, wood screws out the wazoo, they've got it. Use the super top secret code DA30 and spend more than 50 bucks and you'll get 30% off your order. So now let's get back into some of the stuff I've done. And I'm sorry, I'm trying to keep these videos short, but already I'm at five minutes. Gosh, isn't that bizarre? So I knew I, I originally had a one row radial on the front of the MSO. And because of ego, I'm like, uh-uh, if it was going to be a real air racer, I would have been the first person back in 1929 to put a two-row radial in it. I don't even know if two-row radials existed, okay? So, <clears throat> in my Fusion 360, I knew that this was going to be a big engine at 17 half inch diameter. And I knew it would take a couple of weeks to print. Because keep in mind, that each valve covers a part, each cylinder has a front half. Then you have what I call the, the cylinder ring, which is a ring that is the base of the cylinder that I then put the bolts in to hold it to the um, crank. So I always start doing the crankcases first and the cylinders. But something you need to think about 3D printing. <clears throat> the way I've taught it to people is if you take a bottle of toothpaste and you print your name on a counter, that's layer one. Now you do it again. Now pretend the toothpaste is going to harden. Do it again, that's layer two. Do it again, that's layer three. So when you 3D print, it's in layers. And you can choose how thick you want those layers. The thinner the layer, the better the part normally looks as far as resolution. The thicker the layer, you can see the lines. But then imagine you're squirting the toothpaste and you run off your table. Well, the toothpaste is going to hit the floor. There's nothing supporting it. So you can't 3D print where something's not being supported. So when you go to do like your cylinders, you do it as a front half and a back half because you're going to lay them on their back when you print them. If you try to print it like this, every one of those cooling fins are going to need some kind of support between them. And that's more material being printed. And you want to make everything as hollow as you can. You don't want to 3D print a 17 and a half inch motor that weighs 30 pounds put in the front of an RC plane. So basically looking at the left hand picture here, this is what it would look like on your print bed. And I'll show you pictures of that later. But on the right hand side is a half scale cub jug that has a front half, a back half, and a valve cover. So you need to think about when you're designing that this will be 3D printed. Now what I want to talk about is uh, how you... So let's say you, me personally, when I design things, I designed it for what I call standoff scale, which means you're 10 feet away and it looks awesome. But if you get six inches away, that's a totally different beast. This here is a Wright J5, and there's a huge long story behind it. Maybe one day I'll do a video on the whole story, and I probably should. But there was a gentleman who had built the most unbelievable Kurdish Jenny in the world. Um, and you probably have seen his Jenny. He, it, it, it's just a museum, like, quality Curtis Jenny, the most unbelievable thing you'll see. Well, he was going to build a quarter scale Spirit of St. Louis, but he didn't want to do it unless he could find an absolute replica engine. So he's all over the internet, and I think he was kind of being misled, and people were talking about, you need this file. This gentleman had no idea what 3D printing really even was. So him and I started talking, and I knew if I was designing this, I was going to have to design it for you to be six inches away, and I knew it was going to have to be perfectly scale. So believe it or not, I found online a company out in uh, California that had uh, copies of the original uh, Wright engine. And I bought those. And I then re kind of reviewed them and thought, I, I, can, I can do this. So I got back together with the old, older gentleman, said, I think I can do this. But I said, you're going to end up with like 125 pieces. And he's like, gosh, would you mind building me the, the motor too? And I said, well, I've never built motors for people. I just do the parts and pieces and you build it. He's like, I don't know how to glue ABS together. I don't know. And I'm like, I'll tell you what, I'll build it for you. I did it for two reasons. One is I wanted to see if I could really do it. And second, this guy was so cool and nice. I, I wanted to help him. I, I, I just... There's something about when somebody's going to do something cool, it gets my juices flowing. So it took me three months, about two hours every night, to draw this in Fusion 360. Okay? What I want to show you is when I was done with this, 
I knew I was going to have to 3D print all of these parts. And were they going to 3D print? Because sometimes when I go to 3D print something, it fails. And then I have to go back into Fusion 360 and design a part a little bit different for it to work. Okay. And hopefully at the end, I'll remember, I'll show you some other um, designs I did that were very high scale too. Um, but this, this, was, this was it. I mean, this was just without a doubt the coolest project I ever did in Fusion 360. So, um, hit the wrong button, everybody. So, we essentially, this is it. Now what I want to talk about is the STL file. And I don't remember what it stands for, and I'm sure someone's going to put it on my YouTube now. But <clears throat> basically, when you design in a 3D program, you have to export something that is going to end up being 3D printed. So when that STL file comes out, you're going to put it into a slicer program. And when you look at that STL laying on your print bed, now this is a simulation of the exact print bed I have. So you look at that and you think, okay, is it going to work? Or you look at the crank front half, say, okay, is this going to work? Then you slice it. And when you slice it, you can see here, there's support that the program's automatically putting in there to hold up the center of the cylinder while it's being built. And I'll explain what that is now. So this is about 20% of the print. If you notice, these walls on the side here are building up. And here's the center support material that's coming up. And this little dark thing right here is representing my extruder nozzle. This is what squirts the ABS out like toothpaste. Okay. This is about 50% printed. And then 100% printed. And if you look at the upper left-hand corner, if you can even see that, it says an hour and 22 minutes for that cylinder. So, <laughs> so think about this. Nine cylinders times two times a front and a half, okay, times an hour and 22 minutes. 3D printing, you need to have patience or a lot of some type of sedative, uh, hopefully over the counter. I, I wouldn't, unless your doctor gives it to you. So that's what that looks like. Now, when you know that looks right and there's no failures, you export it as a G code. And the G code is actually what goes on your flash drive to go into your printer because the printer will only read the G code. This sounds complicated, but if I can learn it, you can learn it. So another neat thing, and I didn't show it on the slicer program because I had just one big cylinder half there. You can tell it to align all your parts that can possibly fit on that printed area. Now there's a good thing, a bad thing here. It's good because you can print a lot of parts at once. It's bad that if you start having a failure, then you've lost this entire print. Most times I only print two parts at a time, even though um, I've got to physically do more taking on and off the bed. Uh, the time's really not that much different, but I hate doing a big print like this because I have a failure of any, and, and a failure is, is where just maybe you run out of filament. <laughs> I've had that happen. Um, or you just have something with the ABS go wonky. I mean, I don't, I probably have one failure out of 500 prints. Okay. Or maybe even, I don't have failures anymore. Um, another thing about uh, this that I'm going to talk about now is the printing aspect. When you print PLA, which is what most people learn on, it, to me, it's super easy. Anybody can virtually print PLA. Now, you need to learn how your printer works. There's usually a glue stick that you're going to put down on the surface that helps the melted material stick on the first layer. And then you use soap and water to take that off or Windex. And then you'll put the glue stick down like every third or fourth print. Once you learn how to do PLA and you really can do anything, I, I throw, I've never owned PLA after I learned how to use the machine because in the sun, PLA will sag and melt really quick. It's a really low temperature material. It's one reason it's easy to learn with. When you get into ABS though, a lot of, I probably had 150 people in the last five years reach out and me say, how in the world do you have such good success with ABS? How do you print only, uh, I mean, uh, success with ABS? How do you print only ABS? And the thing is, is if your, temp if your bed temperature is around 95 C and you're extruding around uh, 245, 250, and you have the right glue stick, which I use the Elmer's purple glue stick, 
it should work perfect. Okay, some people put hairspray down. I don't like that because I think it goes everywhere. Um, there are materials made that people use to put down. Um, I used to melt ABS and make a slurry and you put it down because it works great. But nowadays, and look, I did a whole video on this. So go to my YouTube and find it because there's two Elmer's glue sticks. One is horrible. One is, the other one's perfect. <laughs> I almost flipped you off. So, um, but I built this box around my uh, 3D printers because if I keep that temperature in there about 110 degrees, um, my ABS seems to stay just a little bit more uniformed. Okay, it doesn't come off the bed because of my glue stick, but just stays a little bit more uniform because I like things to be accurate. Um, and I don't go above 110 degrees in there because you got your motors and your circuit boards and everything in there. And from what I've understood, they're good to about 125 ambient, like if you're out in Arizona or something. So when you go to print a half scale jug like this, you got a front half, a back half, and then you got the um, valve cover. All the bolts and nuts I use are actually nylon black from McMaster Car. They go down to 256, all the way up to quarter 20, and they look just like real aircraft bolts when you put them in the airplane. I mean, on the motor. This was um, <clears throat> a more close up version of the little cub engine I did for a POW. This is that right that we just talked about. Keep in mind on this motor, um, if you're going to paint it, which paint sticks great to ABS, you need to think about how thick that paint is. If you've got a really small design, you start putting paint on there, it might fill in your air, air uh, cooling fins. This is the top half of Lerlone I, I designed. And hang on, let me show you. I'm sorry, Mercedes. Oh my gosh, what am I talking about? This is the top half of Mercedes, but I'm going to show you the whole Mercedes three-dimensionally for a minute. So this was a really cool design I did. This was one of my more scale ones I did. And... Um, I sold a lot of these, a lot, but I got ripped off so bad I just gave up. But I do have about five of these for custom people. One of them is a half scale, which is a, that's another thing. When you're going to put it on your 3D bed, you need to make sure that you understand um, if a cylinder is too big to fit on your 3D bed, you got to break that cylinder into two parts. Okay, I mean like the front half and the back half. So in theory, the front and half jug could be four parts if it's too big to fit on your print bed. So this is the top half of the Mercedes. This is the entire Mercedes that you just saw. This is the Lerone I did. And here's a video of it. And I did a boatload of these for people. And um, some people cut off the bottom of it to put their... Um, gas engine head down there to get cooling and to work right and everything. So that's the Lerone. And the valve covers and there's real springs in there. You get those from a master car, the little bitty itty bitty springs. Um, this is a two row radial I did for a project. I mean, this was the prototype. I can't show the real one because I was held under contract, but um, I ended up building um, a big one. I can't say what scale, but it was for a museum. It was massive, and it took 30 days, 24 hours a day to print all the parts for it. This is a turbocharger I designed that goes on a P38 or the turbo supercharger, whatever the heck they call it. This was a top secret project I did. All I can say about it is I have a Hacker A60-16L in the back. I had bearings and shafts running through it, and this is part of a very scale project that the guy is probably going to compete the second half of this year at some fly-ins or some of the contest or maybe next year. I can't even tell you what kind of airplane it's on. But this was a really neat and rewarding thing for me. When I ran this with a 28-inch propeller, uh, like a 14-pitch at a pretty slow RPM, like three grand, it looked so real. And that was on a test stand. This is a Hellfire I did for a really good friend of mine, Jim Spice, who's a helicopter guy. He has a big Cobra. He needed this. This was a really fun little project. This goes, I think it's called a Carbon T28. So a friend of mine had one and said, Damon, I need a better looking radial. So we augured out the uh, cowling. Actually, I bought a cowling for him and stuck this in there. And I did it for about 10 people where I bought the cowling uh, from like Horizon, I think it was. Augured out the old one and stuck this in it. And it looks so cool. Uh, so much better. <clears throat> this is a Stearman engine. And I've gotten into so many arguments with people that the original Stearmans did have a seven cylinder. Others had nines. 
But I had a person buy one of these that I just need a Stearman engine. I said, can you verify if it's seven or nine? He goes, it's whatever on the original Stearman. I sent it to him and he's like, this isn't right. You, you, you should know more about a Stearman. So cub engine, I needed to show this for a customer that wanted a half scale one built so he could get his people to approve it. So of course I took Fusion 360 and I exported it. Exhaust I created for my MSL-1. Uh, bomb I designed a Hamilton kind of middle hub looking thing for static display. <clears throat> Some spinners for a Mosquito, which don't do this, but I did it and they worked up to 10,200 RPM people. But I don't know if you know how to make all the little grooves and things interlock that centrifugal force won't make it fly apart. But I do 3D print a lot of spinners for piles and none of them exploded yet. I've done a lot of exhaust for people. This is the finished Wright J5 on the Spirit of St. Louis uh, before it was weathered and uh, detailed. Um, and I, that's one of the most, I mean, I'm more proud of that project than just about anything I've done on RC. This is my Lerone done. <clears throat> this is my um, uh, Cub Engine uh, prototype. This was a, another prototype. This was what I call the outer half um, cub kit, which basically a friend was building a big cub, half scale, I'm sorry, third scale, that was going to have an inline twin cylinder, but he wanted this stuck out the sides. And this worked perfect. And you can see all those bolts and nuts. Those are all nylons from McMaster Car. This was a turbo supercharger 3D printed. This is a horrible looking prototype, but the gun looked better when I finally made it later on. Don't do what I'm going to tell you. There's actually a whole video I did about acetone vapor baths. It's on my YouTube. But this is 3D printed, but it looks like it came out of a mold. The cool thing about ABS and ASA is they melt when exposed to acetone vapor. Don't do this at home because you can blow your whole house up. But I built a very high-tech fish tank that I can put acetone in, put my parts in there, let it sit for an hour and a half, and they come out and look like this. I do this for only very custom projects, and I have spark arresters, I have isolators, I know how to build this, but I don't want to tell you how to build it because if you miss one part, you can and probably could burn your house down because acetone vaporized, I think, is more flammable than gasoline vaporized. It is dangerous stuff. Um, this is uh, something that I'm begged to do all the time, and I only do maybe twice a year for people. This is the landing gear for a Brewster Buffalo. This is the middle jack screw, 3D printed 90% of the parts, and then I uh, TIG welded up any of the steel in it, but this is kick-ass. If you've seen the video on my uh, brakes for the MSL-2, you already know about this. They're really kick-ass. Um, exploded view of it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then the brakes on the MSL-2. This is a Brewster Buffalo spinner I did for my buddy. I spun this up to 10,200 RPM and it worked perfect. Um, don't do this, okay? Because if it exploded and hurt somebody, I would feel terrible. But I've 3D printed a ton of spinners. And I've also 3D printed some EDF fans that everybody said would explode and they didn't explode. But don't do it, okay? There's certain ways in printing this that keeps it from flying apart. Don't do it. Um... 3DS printed a lot of wheels for people, or the rims, and with bearings in it for people. Printed this cute little Stearman um, for a blown up Gillow Stearman uh, thing a guy did. Friend of mine's building a very scale C-130, and he says, Hey, Damon, do you know anything about C-130? And if you follow me for any time, you know I did a 180-inch one. 160-inch, um, I'm sorry. And I said, why, what do you need? He goes, I need some really scale like bulkheads and stuff in it. They don't have to be perfect per um, Lockheed, but I need something that looks better than wood. So I printed him an entire set of internal ribs. Keep in mind, there's a fiberglass fuselage. It just needed this for rigidity, but this turned out kick-ass. This was absolutely kick-ass. This is what the upper half of a Mercedes kit looked like before I shipped it. This is my... Uh, MSL-2, two-row radio with the exhaust. that had blinking lights, look at exhaust. But something I want to tell everybody, 
I was so petrified back in 2017 of 3D printing. If my friend wouldn't have told me, you buy the printer. If you don't like it, I'll buy it from you. I never would have done any of this. This hobby has no bounds on what we can learn. The CNC stuff, the fiberglass stuff, the carbon fiber stuff, the 3D printing, molds, foam, pink foam. Everything we've got in this hobby that we can do is endless. Um, when I look at my plane sitting sometimes, and here I am waxing it, but when I see it sitting over there and somebody walks up and goes, oh my God, is that a real radio? I'm like, no, it's a dummy. Why would you put a real radio in there? I said, give me $4,000 and I'll do it. And they go, well, do you like the sound of electric? And this is where I got a pet peeve, people. I've had so many people put me down for flying electric saying, oh my God, that sounds nothing like a real airplane. And I said, your chainsaw engine sounds like a real radio or a real Merlin? Are you kidding me? Your chainsaw engine to me sounds, to me it doesn't sound anything like a real airplane. But guess what? That 32 inch vest prop turning 6,000 RPM has a prop noise that sounds really a lot more real than a chainsaw engine. So if you want to give me four grand, I don't, no, I don't want to say that. Somebody might send me four grand. Um, I would put a real radio in this airplane if I could afford it. But I think that's pretty kick ass. And when people always say, oh my God, that's a radio in there. I'm like, no, it's 3D printed dummy. Are you kidding me? So, and I also want to end this with saying, I don't openly sell these kits anymore. I do do it by commission. I only do about like six a year. And I am booked till the end of 2023 right now because I have to love this hobby or I'm not going to be in it. And people rip me off like you wouldn't believe. You know, I ship a very nice, huge engine over to Africa. And then through PayPal, they say, well, this isn't what I thought it was going to be and takes 50% off it. Well, by the time I would fight PayPal and fight this and everything, it was worth, worthless. PayPal would say, well, tell them to send it back, but I'd have to pay for the shipping from Africa. So people rip me off like you wouldn't believe. And I just quit doing it, folks. Um, but if you want any of these files, you can go to my Patreon. I don't like to pimp it much, but you can go to my Patreon and for like five bucks, you can get access to all my 3D print files. So I think that is a really, really, you know, like say $150,000 worth of my time for five bucks. Because if you look at the 20, I mean, 15 years of drawings and I mean, all my aircraft, um, I should do a video just on my Patreon, but um, I haven't. So to close this down, 3D printing has just opened up a completely different world for me for model aviation. I mean, I can print hard points. I can print, print structural parts. You got to know what you're doing. And I can print really pretty things. <laughs> so look, everybody, um, rock on. Have a great day. Um, please, if you watch this much of a video, you must be interested. Like, subscribe, and share my videos. I'm trying to build my YouTube. See you next time. Stay safe and rock on. Bye.